Indian civilization is a continuum of centuries, and the eternal river Ganga has remained its axis. From the snow-capped Himalayan peaks to the fans of Bay of Bengal, Mother River Ganga journeys across several terrains and cultures. In its journey of over 2,500 kilometers through 51 districts, 600 million people and myriad organisms derive sustenance from it. Ganga is a river that has nurtured Indian culture for centuries. Namami Gange and Intak have come together to document the river from its glacier source at Gormuk to its delta at Ganga Sagar in an effort to comprehend the river's natural, built and intangible heritage from a people's perspective. This process has revealed several hitherto unknown and incredible facts. Come, let us embark on a unique pilgrimage along the to know why it is so revered and to experience in depth the river eternal. Places of pilgrimage on the banks of the Ganga have attracted humankind for centuries. There was a time when road and rail travel were not as developed. In those times, the only means to reach the very heart of India was a boat ride on the Ganga. Therefore, the banks of the river were not only sites for pilgrimage, but also global trade. The tradition of pilgrimage, with the inherent belief that creating facilities for fellow pilgrims enhanced karma to add to the grandeur of architectural heritage along the Ganga. Through this film, we embark on a voyage to discover the built heritage along the river. Ganga Ji is a part of our country, in our tradition, it is a very important place. So, right from Patliputra, where the Nal Mandir to, to the modern, uh, the, the pre-independence pre age, there are many forts, battlefields which happen on the basis of, uh, on the banks of this river. Sathi Sath, after uh, independence, our jitne bhi uh, on the, are on the banks of it. So it is closely associated with the uh, prehistoric, historic as well as uh, the, the modern civilization of India. And there are many buildings which are very unique in nature. And there are many forts where unique uh, chhatris on banks of rivers where people used to come and stay and take bank. The, the, sara, the dharamshalas on the rivers. I say kai on the banks of the Mandakini, in the snow-capped Himalaya, lies a shrine dedicated to Shiva, most significant amongst the 12 Jyotirlingams of India. Shrine is Kedarnath, remote and isolated, and yet a popular place of pilgrimage. This is the site where the Pandavas, heroes of the epic battle of Mahabharata, came looking for Shiva to atone for the fratricide committed by them during the battle. But Shiva is not one to let off sinners that easily. He transformed himself into a bull and roamed the alpine grasslands. Distancing himself from them, the Pandavas sensed the presence of Shiva at five spots in these mountains and these five sacred places came to be known as the Panch Kedars, Kedarnath being the most prominent among them. Such spaces are rendered sacred by the arrival of several holy men and pilgrims over centuries. Thousands of kilometers from the main stem of the Ganga in the south of India lies a spot that was named Gangai Konda Cholapuram, built in the beginning of the 11th century by the king Rajendra Chola. The moment the valorous Chola armies conquered territories close to the banks of Ganga at Mithila, 
they established a temple with a large water body, establishing a central column that was named Ganga Jal Mayam Stambham. The Cholas were so devoted to Mother Ganga that they wished to be anointed at their coronation with the waters of the Ganga. The tall and imposing shikhara of this temple was a depiction of the Himalaya, the source of the Sand River. Presenting themselves as the rulers instrumental in bringing the Ganga all the way to the south of India. Close to the source of the Ganga is the temple of Gangotri. It is believed that pleased with the penance of Bhagirath, this is where Ganga descended to the earth. In the 8th century, the shrine was consecrated by Adi Guru Shankaracharya. In due course, the temple was constructed in its present form by Savai Madhu Singh of Jaipur in the 18th century. The calm and muddy waters of the Yalaknanda meet the turbulent aquamarine waters of the Bhagirathi at Devaprayag to form the Ganga. Devaprayag, the place where divine powers meet, where pilgrims come from afar to witness the materialization of the divine river and to find inner peace. The rock inscriptions here tell us that the tradition of pilgrimage to this spot is much older than 6th century CE. As Ganga enters the Rishikesh Valley, we come to the Lakshman Jhula region, where the well-known suspended tensile wire bridge by the same name welcomes us. In the Himalayas, these bridges serve a very significant function as they connect otherwise isolated regions with the mainstream, providing for education, health and other essential services. Ganga travels further downstream to reach Haridwar. This is the spot where a few drops of the divine ambrosia were sprinkled in haste when Dhanvantari was carrying the urn or kumbha full of the nectar that emerged when the devatas and the demons contested in the great churning of the oceans. The spot where these drops fell is believed to be the Brahmakund at Harki Peri. This is Haridwar's main bathing heart, held most sacred by millions across the world. The Ganga temple and 35 other shrines dot this space. Midstream stands the recently restored pavilion of Raja Manasingh, who got it built during Mughal Emperor Akbar's reign, almost 450 years ago. Turning the pages of history, we realize that establishing control over India in the past was synonymous with controlling trade and transport to the Ganga and the other major rivers. A significant example of this can be found in Chunar, where the southward flowing Ganga takes a sharp turn. The fort of Chunar stands here, facing the vast expanse of the Ganga. This fort has witnessed several twists and turns in India's history. This is where the ancient trade routes of Dakshinapath and Purvapath intersected. The fort was built in the 56 BCE by Vikramaditya. At that point in time, the fort had little strategic significance, but who would have known then that the fort would witness so many crests and troughs in the nation's history? Long march of history, so at time the British came to occupy the plains of Africa. History and empire emerge perish. Human settlements and their monuments remain.
reminding us of the times when the river made and marred fortunes of the settlements along its bustling ghats. At Prayagraj, the other site of the Kumbh Fair along the Ganga, is Khusrobagh, an expansive garden with four mausoleums built amidst the carefully planned landscapes. Khusro was the eldest son of Jahangir. In 1605, after the passing away of Akbar, Khan Salim or Jahangir established his garden for he loved spending time amidst nature. These four memorials in the Greek where members of his family are laid to rest. In the 16th century, Mughal Emperor Akbar built a fort near the confluence at Allahabad. He named the city thus, a name that translates from Persian into the city of God. Since times immemorial, Ganga has retained its connect with humanity. On the banks of this life-giving river, human civilization has evolved. Signs of ancient cultures are visible near Prayagraj in the erstwhile kingdom of Nishadraj at the site of Sringaverpur. Here, the first century water harvesting structure is a unique example of engineering prowess. Interestingly, Sringaverpur is the site where the boatman Kevat washed the feet of Rama and took him on his boat across the river. Chinese traveller Zhuang Zhang visited Kadnoj, situated on the banks of the Ganga in the times of King Harshavardhan. In his travel accounts, he wrote extensively of the prosperity of this kingdom. This is where Jai Chandra established several temples along with a fort. With the passage of time, Kannauj's architectural heritage has all but disappeared. Yet, it is well known that wherever you begin to dig in the region, you are likely to find archaeological remains. Here, Alauddin and Sher Shah Suri also established their forts. For all these rulers, the purpose of these ramparts was to retain control over Ganga as a prosperous trade route. The close connect between Ganga and trade is visible at Farukhabad. This is where the fabled Kampilya kingdom associated with the Mahabharata was situated. The ruins of the Panchal king Drupad's palace have been discovered here. A pond believed to be the birthplace of Draupadi, this town was re-established by Muhammad Khan Bangash in the 17th century and was named after the Mughal king Farukh Shiar. With the establishment of the town came a large number of traders and it remained a center for trade in indigo, potatoes, tobacco and saltpeter. For convenience of trade, traders built 36 Vishrant Ghats or resting places between Kampilya and Sringarampur on the river. With the growth in rail networks in the 19th century, these ghats lost their significance for trade. These monuments, however, still tell tales of the rich culture of the region, visible in their architecture, adorned with attractive wall paintings. Similar forgotten monuments have been discovered in the Unnao region, along the older course of the Ganga. One instance of this is this unique temple dedicated to Shiva, found close to the fort of Raja Ram Baksh Singh. We found another example of how the changing course of the Ganga influences human settlements at Garmukteshwar, also known as the Kashi of the North. The Nakka well here was built as a tribute to Lord Shiva, who is believed to have freed King Nushish from a curse. On the Poot Ghat of the Ganga, one can find chhatris or pavilions 
from the times of the Marathas. This is the spot where Guru Dronacharya is said to have trained his shishyas, the warrior princes of the Mahabharata, in the martial arts. Any mention of Ganga cannot be complete without a reference to Varanasi. In this city of Shiva are situated 84 ghats, each telling its own tale. Let us take the example of Panchaganga Ghat, where five streams are believed to meet. In the background is the Alamgir Mosque, built by Aurangzeb. Its minars providing the highest vantage point in Varanasi. Close by is the Dashashwamed Ghat, where King Divadosh sacrificed 10 horses to perform the Ashwamed Yagna. Not far from the Dashashwamed Ghat is the Kashi Vishwanath Temple, dedicated to Lord Shiva. The temple was consecrated in 1780 by Ahilya Bai Holkar of Indore. In the recent past, the temple complex premises had become congested but government intervention has led to the sacred site regaining its grandeur once again. As the sun sets along the Ganga, the ghats along this temple get transformed into a divine spectacle as people from across the world throng these ghats to participate in an invocation to the Mother River. Truly, Ganga's divine form is clearly visible in these gatherings. A little further from this bustling ghat is the Manikarnika ghat where one can witness the ultimate reality of earth. Manikarnika is perhaps the only spot on earth where cremation rituals have been performed continually for centuries. A divine spot such as this was bound to attract great seekers from Patanjali in the 2nd century to Mahavira, Adi Shankaracharya, Guru Nanak, Kabir, Ramanuj and so many beacons of true knowledge flocked to these banks. 400 years before Christ, another true light of knowledge arrived on the banks of the Ganga, whose message of compassion and peace gave a new direction to humanity. This light was the Buddha, who preached his first sermon, also known as Dharma Chakra Pravartan, or turning the wheel of law, here. The Buddhist Sangha was established here and consequently Emperor Ashoka established a grand Buddhist monastery. At a spot named Chaukhandi, one can still see a stupa from the Gupta period. The Dhamik stupa built by Emperor Ashoka and the Ashokan pillar are situated here. In Bihar, on the banks of the Ganga, we discover the town of Vaishali. Here, the remains of Kutagrashalwar have been found, which is renowned as Buddha Stupa II. This stupa was established by the Lichavis in honor of Sakya Muni Buddha. Incidentally, the Lichavis are also credited with establishing the world's first republic. Vaishali is also significant since it was here that women were first inducted into the Buddhist Sangha. In the districts Vaishali and Samastipur, the existence of several Buddhist stupas has been reported with many turning into archaeological remains and rubble. Also located in this region, were renowned universities Nalanda and Vikramshila, established between the 4th and the 8th centuries. For centuries, the banks of the Ganga 
have been centers of education. For instance, in Varanasi, one finds the Sanskrit University established by Jonathan Duncan in 1791. This magnificent edifice has recently been conserved. Another great center of learning that immediately comes to mind is the Banaras Hindu University. The university was established in 1916 by Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya with donations from the princely states as well as common folk. Ancient Patliputra, also known as Patna, was established in the 3rd century BC by Ajat Shatru of the Magadh Empire. Artifacts from the remains of this once magnificent city can still be seen in Kumrahar Park, Bulandi Bagh and the Patna Museum. Modern Patna is a city located on the Sher Shah Suri built Grand Trunk Road, which was founded by the Turk Afghan rulers. Signs of the colonial expansion are also found here at Golghar, a greenery built in 1770 during the Great Famine. The British, after defeating the Dutch and the French army units in this region, proceeded to the west and established their second cantonment at Danapur. With the passage of time, the British East India Company expanded across India, while the main motive behind British occupation was profiteering they also undertook some projects for public welfare. One of these is the construction of the Upper Ganga Canal, one of the largest canal irrigation projects undertaken at the time. With the construction of the canal, the British sought to tackle the twin issues of seasonal floods and famines in the plains. The canal was built under the supervision of hydraulic engineer Thomas Proby Cotley. With the passage of time, the British developed Kanpur into an industrial city. Gradually, it became a center for production of military equipment and cotton cloth. The first freedom movement of 1857, which began in Barakpur with Mangal Pandey and others revolting against the British, greatly impacted places like Meerut and Kanpur. In Kanpur, the revolutionaries were led by Nana Sahib. After the revolt was repressed, several memorials like the All Souls Church were built by the British to commemorate their dead. The British gradually brought the entire nation under their control. And their influence is clearly visible on the building of Ganga. Whether it is the Cornwallis Memorial in Ghazipur, the Bondale Church of Bengal, or the Grand Post Office of Kolkata. But before the British came into Bengal, it was ruled Sultanate kings with their capital at Gore. In the 15th century, this region emerged as a center known for its rich literature and architecture. The terracotta mosques of the region reflect a fineness of detail and artistry. In the 16th century, the capital of Bengal was shifted from Gore to Raj Mahal in Sahib Ganj. In the courtyard are the Singhi Dalan, Baradari, Rang Mahal and Jama Masjid bearing testimony to an age of affluence. On the banks of the Hooghly in West Bengal's Chinsura is situated the Hooghly Imam Bada. This is a masterpiece constructed by Haji Muhammad Mohsin not to serve a rich man's mere whim, but to grant employment to large number of people during the Great Famine. 
the main gate of this grand edifice stands out with its two grand minarets that flank the large clock. This clock was crafted in the same factory that manufactured the big of London and continues to tell the correct time. In Chinsura, we also come across these two railway bridges, one built in 1865 and the other a more recent one. The bridges highlight the manner in which British rule instrumentalized rail transport for their political and monetary benefit. In Sirampur, businessmen from Denmark were permitted to trade in 1755. Gradually, they came to occupy it and renamed it Frederick Nagor. Here, in the Danish quarter, one still finds elements of their architectural style in the government house, the jail, St. Olaf's church and the Sirampur college. While the Danes occupied Sirampur, it was the French that came to Chandarnagar. The promenade along the river reflects the French architecture of this town. Duple House, once known as the Institute de Chandarnagar, is today a museum showcasing French heritage in India. The Sacred Heart Church here is also a recently restored masterpiece. In Kolkata, we arrive at the famous landmark of BBD Bagh, named after three freedom fighters, Binoy, Badal and Dinesh. The Dalhousie Square is at the center of the city, which houses the red brick writer's building that remained the center of British control over India and now serves as the seat of the government of West Bengal. At a short distance is a Corinthian masterpiece with a 68-meter imposing dome balanced over 28 pillars. This is the Taj Mahal of the British Raj, the Victoria Memorial. It took 16 years to build this grand edifice in the Italian Renaissance style. The vast architectural heritage along the river Ganga was documented by Intac's Architectural Heritage Division, Uttarakhand chapter and the West Bengal chapter of Intac. This mammoth task was performed by studying more than 5,300 monuments. The effort bears testimony to the fact that with the origin of Ganga in Uttarakhand, to its merging with the oceans in Ganga Sagar in West Bengal, the river's journey has engendered a rich and built heritage that reflects unity in diversity. For now, that will be all. In our next journey along the river, we shall explore human cultures along this sacred river. Until then, glory be to Mother Ganga. जय हो गंगा महरानी हम हो के देदा दरसनवा जय हो गंगा महरानी अरे जय हो महरानी हो जय हो महरानी हो महरानी हो जय महरानी हम हो के देदा दरसनवा जय हो गंगा महरानी हम हो के देदा दरसनवा जय हो गंगा महरानी